last week of the prayer toolbox. How many of you guys have enjoyed that? Okay. So James 5, 16, let's just jump right in. The effective, say effective, effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. How many of you want prayers that don't work? <laughs> no, we want prayers that work, right? We want prayers so that when we know, when we pray for a situation, we know that God's going to work on it, that it is starting to happen, that things are moving and changing for our favor, right? Well, that's called effective prayer. And as we've learned all these different prayers, we are learning to pray effectively because God help me helps when you maybe first have are in crisis and are just getting to know God. But then we need to learn how to effectively pray so that we can mature and grow up in our walk with God. So we've been talking about the prayer of faith. We've talked about the prayer of dedication, of commitment, of worship, the prayer of agreement, prayer of unity, and prayer in the Holy Spirit. So we've covered all these. We've also covered fasting. We've covered how we pray. We pray to the Father in Jesus' name, right? We don't pray to Jesus. We pray to the Father. We've talked about the things that will stop your prayers from working. We've talked about a lot of things. But um, we're going to wrap it up today with our two final prayers. And um, we don't have time to review those, so I encourage you to go back on our app or website or whatever and um, go through those. But number eight today is prayer of intercession. Prayer of intercession. Now, I wanted to say, how many of you have ever were, heard the word intercession or intercessor? Okay, a lot of us. But really, uh, the, the word has not been really used quite accurately. Because usually we use that word when we're praying for someone else. And, you know, I've even myself used it the wrong way. I'm like, yeah, I've got an intercessory prayer team praying for me. Well, technically, that's not what intercessory prayer is for. Intercessory prayer is not for Christians. It is for those who do not yet know God. It is for those or for those Christians who are in sin heading the wrong direction. That's where intercession is. So we need to reframe our, our thinking a little bit about intercession and intercessory prayer and look at what the Bible has to say about it. Okay? So let's go on this. Let's start this journey today. Second Peter 3, 9, it says, He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. So God's heart is that none pe no, no, no people perish, that, that they don't lose their lives and go into the pit of hell, but he wants them to repent and make a relationship with him and make it to heaven. So if that's God's, uh, God's heart, as believers, what should our heart be? The same thing. So if God loved the world so much that he said, Jesus, to intercede for us and to get us connected to God... Come on, don't you think it might be our responsibility to help other people get connected to God as well? Amen. See, intercessory prayer is praying that others will come to know him. Intercession is praying that they would come to know Jesus, that they would have a relationship, or, as I said, if someone who is a Christian is heading down the wrong path, that they would turn and repent and know God. So look at Romans 5, 8. But Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly. You know what I love about this is that people don't have to earn our prayers. Okay? Let me say that again. They don't have to earn our prayers. They may be driving you crazy. They may be the most wicked, evil person towards you, but they don't have to earn our prayers, just like we didn't have to earn God's love. You see, he says we're to pray for those who despitefully use you. He's, we're to pray for those who attack us and go after us. So we have to pray because that's what God did for us. In our mess, in all of the things we did wrong, he prayed, he died for us, okay? So in people's mess, we have to understand that the compassion God has for us, we need to start developing a compassion for those around us who are hurting. And we can do that. And as we have compassion, we can start interceding and start praying. And not looking at the human behavior, looking at the outward behavior, but instead looking at what God's heart is, which is that they not perish. Okay? So we need to realize that interceding is part of our, um, what we're called to do. So how does it work? 
Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 5 says this, For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, and that is the man Christ Jesus. Now, why is this important? Because we did not have access to God before Jesus came. Sin had caused a rift and there was no connection for us to have a relationship with God. So people would have to go to, to, to people in the temple and have plead their case and then they would go to God and they would do sacrifices and they would do all sorts of things. And Jesus showing up on the earth was a connection point, the mediator for reconnecting us directly to God. You see, what we were like without Jesus is a lamp. Okay, because we were called to be the light of the world, right? So this lamp has great potential. Its purpose is to light up a room, right? But right now it can't. Why? Why can it not light up? Because it's not tapped into the power, right? It doesn't matter how hard it wants it, how hard it, it desires it, how hard you speak to it. It does not it have the ability to do what it's called to do because it's not tapped into the power. But Jesus became the mediator, which says, man, these guys really need God. <laughs> and I'm going to become the mediator. And he took the power of God and our human state and he connected them. This isn't the greatest plug here. Okay, so that we could... <laughs> So you got to stay close to Jesus, okay? <laughs> you just really do. Okay, when you're preaching, you got to stay on your toes because you just never know what will happen with an illustration. Anyhow, so Jesus is the mediator who, pull, who connected us to God. But here's the problem is your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, they're in this state because God still has purpose for them. He still has things he wants to accomplish. He still wants to indwell in them. But if they don't know him, they're a light that doesn't work. And you see, too often we look at their human state instead of looking at their godly potential. And what God is saying is when you learn how to intercede, what you are doing is you're going, this is where they're at. And this is the promise of God for them. Now, we cannot make a decision of salvation for them. They have to make that themselves. But there's a bridge we can do to pray them closer and closer to accessing God's power for their life. Or they're sick. They don't have the connection to the power for healing but we do, we can intercede and stand in that gap. We can pray for protection over them so that until they make that decision for Christ that they're protected. You see, we can pray that God starts sending people in their paths to tell them about Jesus so that they can connect to him and be the light. You see, they have, we cannot override somebody's free will, but we can sure pray that God start messing up their plans really, really good, <laughs> right? <laughs> So that's what we want to talk about. So that is our job as intercessors is to stand in that gap of where they're at and where God wants them to be. Because God cannot move on this earth without what? Prayer. Us praying. Go back to week one, okay? We have to be the ones to pray. God cannot move on, his, on this earth just because he wants to. He needs to have us take our authority as human beings on this earth and pray. And that's how we see people come to know Jesus. How many of you know somebody who doesn't know Jesus yet? Yeah. We all do. This is how intercession is how we're going to start seeing them connect to God. See them connect to the heart of God. Seeing them connect to the purpose of God. You know, as we do that, you cannot pray a prayer to make Jesus the Lord of their life. They have to pray it on their own. But you can pray that circumstances just keep showing up in their pathway. I went this way and I just bumped into that. I went that way. It's this funny thing. that ha What happened today? You know, watch how people talk. You know, it's just kind of weird. It's like all the stars were lined up in my favor. And then I bumped into that. And then this happened. And this, really? Come on, people have been behind the scenes praying and interceding for the Holy Spirit and the angels and to get everybody corralled up to get their... Why? Because God loves people. He is looking for every opportunity he can to draw people into himself. He wants relationship with them. And so God continually looks for us to intercede, for us to be that plug in that gap so that we have, these guys have a chance of making it. Imagine if somebody didn't do it for us. Come on, we'd be lost, blind, 
blinded, not knowing where we're going, confused. Have you ever seen people when it's really dark? Watch you in the, at, at night. Come on, we're, we're feeling along. I think my dresser's over here somewhere. We're moving so You're not racing. You're going slow. Why? Because you don't know where you're going. You know, without Jesus, that's how most people live their lives. I hope there's no cliff around here. It's true. But when we have a revelation of who God is, and the Bible even says that when people are in sin, that their eyes are blinded. Well, can I just say, because how many of you have ever seen someone who is just like they are heading down a path that is going to put them off a cliff and they just can't seem to see it, right? It's like, don't you see that this affair is going to mess your life up? Can't you see that this addiction is just going to destroy your life? And they're like, no, it's all good, right? But we can because we have revelation of the spirit. But let's look at the scripture. It says John 12, 40. It says, the Lord has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that their eyes cannot see and their hearts cannot understand and they cannot turn to me and have me heal them. Here what it's saying is when there are people in rebellion, there is a hardness on their heart that can only come off with the power of God. That, that there are things that they cannot see until they turn to the Lord and then he starts revealing things. Have you ever seen something in the Bible and it's like, Whoa, that's an amazing promise. And you go to talk to somebody else and they're like, I don't get it. Right? Or you try to share your life with Jesus and people are like, I don't get it. Right? Because it has to supernaturally be unveiled. And that's where intercession comes in. When we pray, that veil of blindness, of, of, of not understanding starts to wear off. Because we are standing in a spiritual position to pray over them that that hardness stops and that they can start seeing people. So how do we intercede? The Bible says that we take the word of God and we pray it over them. I don't know how to pray. Yes, you do. You pray the word of God over them. You start speaking life into their situation. You start speaking life into their marriage if they're married. You start speaking life into their workplace. You start speaking life of everywhere they go, not they're never gonna add up to anything. They've heard that their whole life. That crowd has been out there speaking that into their life. What if somebody came alongside of them and started speaking life into them and building them back up? Well, that's just a shift because that's what God wants us to do is to intercede for these people and bring life back into them. In fact, listen. Well, just, just let me add something. The Bible says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. The problem is we often think it's our tongue is sharper than any two-edged sword. And so we go talking at people and we try to talk them into a revelation of God. Right? We cannot... Our words are not powerful enough to convince somebody of a spiritual condition, but the word of God is. So we need to realize that we've got to start taking the word of God. And I'm not talking about getting in their face. Oh, hi, you need Jesus. Well, in the name of Jesus, the word of God says, and this is about you. You know, we're turning people off because of that, right? To be honest, you know, have you ever seen those big signs on the corners and they're going, you're going to hell. <laughs> yeah, that's attractive. <laughs> yeah, let me sign me up, you know? <laughs> No, it's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. But what we need to do is realize we're dealing with a spiritual condition in people. So we need to deal with the spiritual side, which is done in intercessory prayer. That way to their face, we can love on them. We can just show them God's love and not have to preach at them all the time. We'll, we'll wait for that opportune time when God says and the Holy Spirit leads us to share the words. But first we start it with prayer, okay? And you, the best way to do that is with scripture. So at the end, we're gonna show you a whole bunch of scriptures. Um, so I encourage you to look in your app. All the notes are in there. But one of the verses that we've prayed over ourselves, over our kids, over other people, we just pray this, especially with intercessory where people are not seeing what God has for them. I want you to Ephesians see this. Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, it says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. See, if, if you're blinded, you can't see. But when somebody flips all the lights on all of a sudden, you're not going to be stumbling around in the dark, are you? 
See, when we pray that the God, the basically the light of God gets shone up in their lives, all of a sudden they go, oh man, I think I can find my way. I think I'm going to be okay now. Because a lot of people go, I wonder if my marriage is going to make it. I wonder if my kids are going to make it. I wonder if I'm going to lose my job. See all the seeds the devil plants? I I wonder if I'm going to live past 35. I wonder if I'm going to this. I wonder if I'm going to that. I wonder if I'm going to... Listen, people wander through life instead of having a direct, uh, direct connection to God where God opens their eyes and says... And all of a sudden they start seeing that God has this amazing plan for life and to prosper them and not to harm them, to give them a hope and a future. You're the answer. When you intercede and you're connecting them and you're constantly looking for ways to help their lives get in in order, what happens is God is in the process of working on their lives. Now, how many people know that whatever you sow, you'll also reap? Some of you can use some help in your own families. Families are hard to reach. Well, it's quiet in here. It's easier for an outsider to talk to your family than you. They go, remember him, Remember her? Remember that Jesus? We remember when 12 years old. And the Bible says they had no great miracles because of their lack of faith. But sometimes from the outside, people can get in and and ship things and help you. You pray. Pray that they hit into situations. Pray that godly people get in their path and get a hold of them. Get their hearts. And that they see the revelation of what they're doing is wrong. But another way that we've... Um, learn to pray for people who, who are in a wrong path, who aren't living for God yet, is um, in Hebrews 11, it talks about how the, um, the pleasure of sin is for a season. Well, seasons come and go, right? So we would pray, Lord, I just pray that that pleasure of sin for a season is over. We just call an end to that season. Because I don't even know, if, if sin isn't fun anymore, people tend to be more willing to, to have a come to Jesus moment. Because why do I leave something when it's fun? So you just call an end to that season. You know, I was just studying um, this week in Hosea, the book of Hosea. And in chapter 2, um, verse 6, 7, and 8, it's, you're going to have to write that one down because it's not in the notes or the app. But um, it talks about how, uh, you know, Israel is rebelling and all of this kind of stuff. And God is trying to pull them back to himself. And in those verses, it talks about how putting a thorn bush around them. So anytime, you know, they're, they're trying to do something they're not supposed to, it's going to hurt. And basically just, it's a great verse. I'm going to get you just to go look at it yourself, but to pray over people who are not living for God, right? So that that world stuff is not desirable for them anymore. And let me tell you, it's amazing how you can mess with your, your kids' lives and those around you when you just start praying that sin doesn't feel good anymore. Amen? Because <laughs> then why do it? But um, sin will destroy people, and that's why we need, to, we need to be interceding for them. Okay, people need Jesus, and we are going to stand before the Lord someday of, did we pray for our community or not? Did we pray for the people in our lives or not? Because we may be the only person praying for them. Think about that. You may be the only person in their life who knows how to pray. So we are responsible for that. But um, as you intercede and pray for people, there's something really cool that happens. It actually will attract them to you. Okay? As you pray for people, even um, as you pray for a specific issue even, um, it's amazing how suddenly God starts attracting that favor to you. Uh, and, and as you pray for people in your life, family members, it's amazing how suddenly they'll start calling you or start, you know, hey, you know, man, I know you do this prayer thing. Could you pray for me? And that's like, how did that happen, right? Or all of a sudden at work, people are talking to you and, and kind of like, I don't know what it is, but you've been praying for them. You've been interceding for them and they get attracted to you. We have a, a really cool illustration of this is um, for a few years now, we've been working with an organization that brings girls out of sex trafficking and we love them. And we've been able to do a lot of work with them. And a lot of the girls come to our church, which we just love. And they are loving Jesus. They're doing so great. We are so immensely proud of them and the work they're doing in their lives. And um, the cool thing is, um, over the years, we've done different things with them. And they have different homes, graduate homes and step homes and um, assessment homes and all those kind of things. And whenever possible, we've tried to help adopt a room and do renovations and furnish it and everything else. And so we did, a couple years ago, we got a phone call really last minute. 
um, saying, would you do this room in an assessment house? It's the first house they come into to see if they continue on in the program. And um, we didn't have time. It was only like four days till it had to be done. Didn't have time to you know, get funds together, but we just said yes. We just felt like we should. So we just said yes, and Kim, George, and put a team together, and they went, and they took care of this room and made it beautiful and everything else. But it's great to make a room beautiful, but they did something that was extra special, and they interceded in that room. And they started praying for every girl who would stay there. And they didn't know the names, and they didn't know the faces, but they knew that someone would be in there who needed Jesus and who needed to know they were loved. So they started praying over all of those girls that would come through there. Well, this is a couple years ago. A few months ago, we started talking with the girls um, who come into the church, who are, who are attending here. And um, one by one, we started telling them about this room we had done. And it just came up in conversation. And they were like, wait, I stayed there. And then we went on to the next girl. And they go, but I stayed in that room. No, I stayed in that room. And of all the rooms in this house, all the girls in this church right now went through that room. Yeah. We just, we sat there and cried together. Realizing how good is God? When you intercede, it will draw them to you. And you're at, it, it works, whether you know their names or faces or not. What would happen if we as a church interceded for our community, for the lost, for the hurting, the people who just need to know that Jesus has a plan for them? And what if we all decided to start praying for them? What would they be attracted to? They'd be attracted to us. They'd be attracted to a place where they could come in and start getting healing, where they could learn about Jesus and the amazing plan he has for you. Intercession is so powerful, we cannot afford to not do it. Amen. Because it will attract them to us. So the, the next prayer. Ninth prayer is the prayer of supplication. And this is a continual prayer. Now, when we first prayed, we talked about the prayer of faith. We say we pray that one time, we ask God, and then we thank him. But the prayer of supplication is something that we go over and over and over, and we keep praying it. Now, James 5.16 says this, the, help, the heartfelt and persistent, everybody say persistent. Persistent. Prayer of a righteous man, a believer, can accomplish much. But when put into action and made effective by God, it is dynamic and have tremendous power. So then the question is, who is this prayer for? If we're going to have this prayer of supplication, who is this prayer for? Okay, so the first one is for those who are in authority. In 1 Timothy 2, 1, it said, First of all, then, I urge that petitions, which are specific requests, prayers, intercessions, which is prayers for others, and thanksgiving be offered on behalf of all people for kings and all who are in positions of high authority so that we may live in a peaceful and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Now, before he talks about this, I just want to point something out. There are multiple prayers that are mentioned here. As we've taught you these nine kinds of prayers, it's not like, well, today I'm going to pray prayer six, and tomorrow I'm going to pray prayer eight. No, what happens is they all start, it's like fingers on a hand, and eventually they all start working together, right? Because if I tried to pick up this cup with just one finger, it, it's tough, right? It has to work in cooperation with other fingers. That's the same with prayer. One works with the other to work with the other, um, and that's what this is talking about. But here it's talking about praying for kings and those in authority. Yes. So the, one of the things God commands us to do is pray for those in authority over us. This is important. Well, I don't really like what the decisions are making. Well, then pray. It doesn't say complain. Oh, it's quiet in here. Don't get mad at me now. Listen, I don't like all the decisions all the governments make on my behalf either. But if all I do is whine and complain about them, I don't pray. Am I fixing the problem? When the government makes a good decision and it benefits the people, how many people like it? When they make a bad decision, we're like, Rrr. come on. We need, to just, we need to be people that get in there and start praying. That God get a hold of their heart. That God get a hold of their heart before they make decisions. Now, the Bible says pray for our employers. Why, well, he isn't paying me enough. Come on, let's be honest. That's how, that's how a lot of people work. Why should I pray for him? He always gets ahead. Well, why don't you ask him, what can I pray for you to see your business even go to the next level so I can get a raise? Come on, somebody. Just throwing out some ideas. 
Pray for your church. Pray for your pastors. We need prayer. Please. <laughs> you know, when God asks us to do stuff, we feel like we're way over our head. Really, God? I think that's not a good idea. I know it was your idea, but it's kind of scary. Listen, when God asks you to do stuff, it's never in your ability. Are you getting this? It's in his. But if you pray that prayer supplication for people to help them through, as you pray for your employers, as we pray for our governments, things will shift in our favor. So as he said, that prayer of faith is the one-time prayer, right? It's something we're asking for. It's a specific thing. And then we thank God. The prayer of supplication is the continual. And uh, so how do we continually pray? Because uh, we need to know how do we... How does this work so that we're not diluting the prayer of faith, etc.? But we do this um, in an amazing way, which I'm going to show you in this next one. Because the first is you pray for the, those in authority through supplication, through daily, regular prayer. The next is we do it for ourselves. So the prayer of faith is for ourselves, but so is the prayer of supplication. And I want to show you a little bit how that is. Is that, as we said, you take the word of God... Okay, just like we did in the prayer of intercession, you take the word of God and you pray it over yourself. We have done this. We've raised our children to do it um, because there is something powerful. Like we talked about, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. So what we do is we take the scripture and we pray it over ourselves every day. That's where that continual prayer comes of like, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that no weapon formed against me can prosper. I thank you, God, that I am the head and I'm not the tail. I thank you that I'm above and not belief. I thank you, Lord, like Psalm 91 says, that a thousand fall at my side, 10,000 at right, my right hand, but it will not come near me. I thank you that your angels hold me up so I won't even cast my foot on a stone. I thank you that with long life you will satisfy me and show me your salvation. That's what we pray over ourselves and all those other ones, but that is all scripture. We've just learned to condense it and pull what God is putting on our heart and pray it and speak it over ourselves every day. Psalm 91 is amazing. If you don't know where to start, take Psalm 91 and pray that. That's where a lot of those ones that I just said came from. But when you do that, you start to, you're, supplicating, you're, you're starting to put the word of God in you. Now, the Bible talks about seed time and harvest, right? And if I were to plant seed today... Would I have a harvest today? No. There's, there's a growing season, right? Well, the word of God is seed in your life for a miracle that you might need. Okay? But the thing is, that word of God has got to have some time to grow so that faith truly develops in our life. So what happens is many times we don't take the word of God and, and pray it over ourselves until we're in crisis. But the problem is if you wait till you're in crisis to find out what God's word says about that issue, you're going to have to wait until that seed has had time to grow in the soil and grow in your spirit and grow in your heart and mind before it will produce a harvest. What if you started right now when you're healthy when your finances are going good, why not start now saying, I thank you, Lord, that I walk in health. I thank you, Lord, that above all things, your word says you desire that I prosper and be in health as my soul prospers. I thank you, God, that my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that health is mine because by his stripes, I am already healed. What if every day I started taking that? So then guess what? When a sickness tries to come on me, it's like, whoa, no, it's harvest time, honey. <laughs> I've been planting all year long. I don't plant only once a year for a fall harvest. I plant every single day so that when I'm in crisis and need it, I have the word of God ready to come and my miracle is ready to harvest at that time. Do you see this? This is the power of supplication. When we are taking that, it's that earnest that you're, you're speaking the word of God over yourself. This isn't asking for stuff. This is planting the word of God in you. This is saying that earnest, Lord, I thank you, God. Lord, I'm just believing right now that I've got these things, that this promise is coming my direction, and you are planting seeds for a future harvest. That's how you're going to start seeing miracles work in your life more, where that's things you need. Man, it's ready. It's ready. It's ready. It's ready. It's ready. Okay, we need to be continually seeding the word of God in our lives, especially if you don't need it yet. Okay? Amen. Especially. That's why don't wait till you're in crisis for something. I mean, start. If you're in crisis, start. Okay? <laughs> 
But then when you get the victory, don't stop praying that health over yourself. Don't stop praying that over yourself. Keep it going so you have a future harvest. So the third thing, the third part of this prayer is praying for Christians. Ephesians 6, 18 says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Everybody say, for all believers all believers. Everywhere. Everywhere. So what does God want us to do is continually build each other up as believers. Yes. But here's what happens. And this is why we have so many different kinds of, of, of churches out there today. Well, I don't, we didn't believe in that, so we split off. We didn't believe in that, so we split off. We didn't believe in this, so we split off. And now what do you got? Fractions. Come on. Yeah. At, the, at the end of the day, I said to people in, the, in all these organizations, I said, we'll all be in heaven. Oops, my bad. Oops, my bad. Oops, my, are you with me? Yeah. We've all missed it. We've all fallen short. Yeah. But if we could pray for believers all around the place, everywhere, because we live really good in this nation, but not every nation lives that good. Some of them, they persecute them and they hang them and they burn them alive and they do all sorts of crazy things. Are we praying? If God puts on your heart to be praying for the people in certain nations, you need to just stop and just say, God, I don't know what they need. I don't know what they're going through, but I'm asking you to just show up right now for them. Lord, just move on their lives. Let something supernatural happen. Give them some kind of a breakthrough. What are you doing? You're just interceding to help them. See, the Bible says that they'll know you're my true disciples because of your love of the brethren. In other words, we as believers should get along because when we're in heaven, we're going to have to get along anyways. Might as well just have some practice time on earth. Go ahead and smile. Some people are hard to deal with, aren't they? But God loves them just as much as he loves you and me. Keep smiling. Well, I want to give you just a really practical thing when we're, because we're supposed to pray for each other. And... Um, how many of you have ever had someone come up to you and say, hey, would you remember to pray for me? Right? Or they text you or they email you, hey, pray for me. You don't have to raise your hands. I know I'm guilty. I'm sure many of you are. I'm going, yeah, I'll pray for you. And then we go on our way and we forget to pray for them. Right? Here is a little trick or a little tip. Do it right then. If they say, hey, would you pray for me? Go, absolutely. Either pray with them like right now. Just go, Lord, just be with them in this situation. We just pray healing or whatever it is they need. And just let them go. It doesn't have to be deep, right? And then as the Holy Spirit reminds you, afterwards, you can keep praying for them. But for sure, get it out of the way. Or if you see a post on Facebook or social media and it's saying pray, instead of just going by and going, oh, I'll add that to the list later, pray right then. Pray right then. If somebody is, you know, you don't have a chance to pray with them live and they've asked you for prayer and they walk off, just right then go, Lord, I just pray you'll be with them in their situation. Or right now I'm just declaring the word of God over their situation, okay? Just do it instantly. And then when the Holy Spirit reminds you later, you can pray. But I do not want to have committed to pray for somebody and then to walk away and not have prayed for them. So just a little thing. Let's just do it instantly. So the now fourth the fourth... One. You going to do it? Yeah. All right, the fourth on. thing is for more that, that we do supplication for is for more people to do the work of the ministry. Okay, that is not our job. That's that's your that our job is to equip the saints for the working of the ministry, and it's all of our jobs to go and do it. But Matthew nine. 37, 38, it said, he said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his field. You know, a harvest doesn't bring itself in. There are people out there ready to meet Jesus. There are, but we need to, to pray that more people get the revelation that it is our job to go out and take Jesus into the business world. I don't need more pastors. What I need is more people who are in ministry doing what God's called them to do in their profession, in their place, in the schools, in the, as nurses and doctors, as business people. Take Jesus out there and love on people out there. That is the mission field. And so we need to be praying that people do this. But we need to be praying. You know, as, as we talked about at the very beginning of this series, we said um, that we were to pray without ceasing. 
And as we said, that's a very challenging thing because we go, how do we pray without ceasing? If prayer is by our bedside on our knees, how can we do that without ceasing and still go out and do life and go with the world and all this? But now as we're starting to have, as we've gone through all of these nine kinds of prayers, are you starting to see how we can live a life that is a life of prayer? Where we can be in worship mode, where we can be praying for people as they go. It's not a, a, a tucked away time period in the morning or at night. It's great to have those times and it's so important to get tucked away with your word of God and, and time. But prayer needs to be an ongoing conversation with God because he's an ongoing relationship that we should be living in. So I encourage you, we had bookmarks made up um, a few weeks ago. If you didn't get one, you can get one today. And it's a, like a kind of a quick, easy recipe for prayer. P, for praise and worship. We start with praise and worship. R, repentance, a change of thinking. A, ask for what we need. Y, y yield. Okay, you can go and get a bookmark. Because that's basically, we want to develop lives of prayer because prayer changes things. And so I encourage you, start praying. Go over this series. If this is new to you, go over it and just keep learning and growing. And once again, if you are brand new in your walk with Jesus, just start talking to him, okay? This is for, this is for as you want to grow up and get better in your prayer life. But otherwise, just start talking to him. He so desperately wants to just meet you where you're at. We, we put together a list of prayers that you can pray. They're in your app. They're going to put them up on the screen. You We're not going to go down through quick. them for time's sake, but this is just... Can you just put them up on the screen? This is just something that, that um, you can, in your prayer time together, just take these, take these scriptures and pray them over your life, pray them over others. And you can take a picture with your phone, too, yeah. of the screen. So in doing that, we're going to develop a lifestyle of prayer, a way of living. It's not that, oh, I forgot to do that. This is how I live. This is how I do it. And you will forget things at times. Come on, that's just how life goes. It gets busy and things happen. But as we continue to strive towards it, all of a sudden you'll say, man, I got the tools now. When I get into situations or people are in difficult situations, I know how to help them. I know how to pray. I want to invite everybody to bow their heads and close their eyes. And if you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the number one step in getting adopted into this family. Yes, heaven becomes your home in, in, in praying this prayer. But not only that, you get to understand and find out how to live a life of abundance, of blessing uh, on the earth here today. So I want to pray a prayer with you. And I'm going to invite everybody to pray it with me. This is between you and God. I won't embarrass you. I won't ask you to stand up. I won't even ask you to raise your hand. This is between you and God. So if you're here, you're online, you're in the Winnipeg campus, just say this out loud with me. Believe it as you say it and watch what God does. It goes like this. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' I name. I ask that you'd forgive me. I ask that you forgive come me. Come into my life. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. Help me to live for you. Help me to live for you. Every day of my life. Every day of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. That is so exciting. 